How's it going guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to talk you through buy stops and sell stops and how you can use them within your trading. And if they're used in the right context, buy stops and sell stops can be seriously powerful if you do implement them in the right ways. So first of all, let's just head over and show you where you would place a buy stop and a sell stop. Now in our first example right here, as you will notice, we might have come down into an higher time frame, point of interest, area of interest, whatever you want to call it. We might have taken out some sell side liquidity and then we might be looking now for a reversal. So for me personally, how I use buy stops and sell stops, I will set my buy stop in this example on the previous candle right here, assuming that this bullish candle has not yet formed. So what I would do is I would set my order just on the top of the wick of this previous bearish candle. And then once this green candle right here, the bullish candle, once this candle starts forming and then once it does trade through our buy stop, which is obviously being set on the top of this previous candle right here. Once this trades through, that is then when our order would be triggered. So once this has formed and traded through, our order would then be on, and then you would be looking for you know price to continue to the upside and hit your take profit wherever you look to take your profits. So that's pretty much the buy stop in a nutshell. And the sell stop is the exact same thing, but obviously the opposite way around. I would obviously set my order on the low of the wick of the previous candle, again assuming that this bearish candle is not yet formed. And then as soon as this bearish candle does start to form and then it trades through our sell stop, our order is on the wick of this previous candle. Once this does go ahead and trade through, that would mean that our order would be then triggered, we would be in the trade. And then obviously what we would look for is we would look to take profit somewhere down here and we would look for price to continue down towards our take profit. So what we will do now is jump onto the charts and I will show you a couple of examples on how I would use buy stops and sell stops and how you can use them in your trading as well. So as you can see, I'm now on the charts and what I will do is I'll show you an example of a buy stop in play. And as you'll notice with this trade, what has happened is we've taken the previous daily low. We've also swept Asia lows and we're now looking to trade back into the range somewhere up in towards these highs right here where liquidity will be resting. So what I'm doing is I would only trade London and New York kill zone. You can trade this in Asia kill zone if you're up and about and available for Asia. But for me personally, I only trade London and New York because that's the times when I'm awake and available to trade. So what I will do is I will just wait for a sweep of a swing low, a fractal low, looking to trade in a bullish direction because my overall bias after a sweep of this and Asia lows my bias is now bullish to trade back into the range. So as you'll notice, New York kill zone is now just coming into play and we will now play price forward. So we do get a push to the upside, but you know, we've had no sweep of a fractal. So at this moment in time, there is no available trade for me to take. And then as you can see, price does come down and take out this previous fractal low. So what you would do is you would put the risk to reward tool on the high of this wick of this candle. You can then, you know, use a little bit of a buffer as much as you like. And then you can put your profit targets wherever you want. So now let's see what happens with price. And as you can see, the very next candle does trade lower. So in my case, what I do with my personal strategy is I will move the order lower to this candle. So I will put the order now on the high of this candle and then I will give the trade a little bit of a buffer and then wait to be tagged into the trade. So I'll target a 1 to 3 for this. You could target this swing high if you want to do that, but 1 to 3 is sufficient and brings nice profits. So what I'll do is I'll see if I get now tr triggered in to this trade. So if we play price forward, what you will notice is that price has now traded through our buy stop. We are now triggered into the trade. So let's see how this trade plays out. Again, we go and we, you know, really tank towards take profit now. We get a little bit of a retracement. And then eventually what happens is we do run towards our TP. And eventually we run towards these highs. So what I'll do is I'll give you one more example just to show you a sell stop in action. So with this trade, I've just jumped up to the four hour chart just to show you the overall direction of the market and the overall idea around why you would take this trade. So as you can see, the momentum and structure, overall four hour structure is to the downside. So now jumping onto the 15 minute, what you will notice is we are coming towards London kill zone. So what we've got is a little bit of a consolidation right here, but the overall idea is to trade towards down these lows right here. So what we'll do is we'll just wait for our session timings 
and we'll wait for the start of London Killzone. So what you will notice now, if we just zoom in a little bit, we have now formed equal highs right here. So if I just put an arrow on this, and then what you could do once we get a sweep of this, if it's inside our session timings, we could then look to take a trade. As you can see, London Kill Zone is now in play. We've now swept the highs with only a wick. So as you will notice, price has tried to push up. It's really struggled to push through these. It's rejected this level. And this is a telltale sign that we might now want to trade to the downside. And with our overall bias being bearish, this would be a trade I would be willing to take. So what I would do is I would set a sell stop below this candle right here. Stop above the highs by, you know, around one pip, two pips, whatever you prefer. And then we will look to target a one to two, one to three, or maybe even down to these lows right here. So now once we trade through the low of this candle right here, that will mean that we are then tagged into this trade. So let's see what happens when we play this forward. As you can see, we are now tagged into the trade. It's a bullish candle. And then as you will notice, we then get a bearish candle trading through this low again. So if you didn't actually get involved on this candle right here, you would now be definitely tagged in. And let's see how this trade plays out. As you can see, you know, real momentum down on the 50 minute chart. So 50 minute chart, real momentum to the downside. This sell side liquidity is right here for the taking. And what we can do is just play press forward. We get a big retracement there, but the trade, but the trade idea is still valid. So it's absolutely fine to keep hold of this. And then eventually what you'll see is we do run down to take profit. We take out obviously this low right here being our sell side liquidity. So if you want to, you could have also just taken profit right there. But one to two, one to three is sufficient and you can make serious money with one to twos and one to threes. So that's the overall idea behind the buy stop and sell stop. It can be really powerful if you use it in the right context. Don't go ahead and start trading, you know, buy stops and sell stops all over your charts. Make sure you go ahead, backtest this, see if this can fit into your personal style of trading. But overall, that's just how simple buy stops and sell stops are, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And without further ado, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.